Hi, we're the Boomer Shines, and we have lived on a boat for a year and a half, and this is the best way to do internet on your boat. First and foremost, let me just say that, that if you are gonna work on the loop or on a boat, you can't really rely on marina Wi-Fi or really your cell phone all the time. Marina Wi-Fi, we love you marinas, but it's pretty much a joke. <laughs> yeah, so this is why you need Wi-Fi on your boat. So before I moved on to the boat, I spent way too much time, watched way too many YouTube videos, got way too confused on all the ways to get internet on your boat. Um, like you need, we needed boosters and all this other stuff and I got very confused. What was the other stuff we needed? Well, we bought like a cellular phone booster that we never used because we were thinking we would be so, using cellular. Yeah, so let me just dial it down for you. You got, there's two really good, really easy solutions. Number one, which is hands down the best today, which didn't exist when we started the loop, is Starlink. Starlink was just starting to come out when we moved on to the boat, so we had to come up with a different solution, which I'll get to next. But um, since then, Starlink is fan flipping tastic for boats. If you are planning to work, or do school, or try to upload any sort of anything while living on a boat, just go ahead and get Starlink. And it really came on fast. Like when we started our loop, it was pretty rare to see a boat with Starlink and everybody's, they'd be like, I have Starlink. And you'd be like, whoa, look at that little uh -huh. dish thing. And then halfway through our loop, just it seemed like every other boat had it. And then by the end of our loop, we had it and every boat had it. Yeah. Well, especially in the Bahamas. And since then also they're changing the rules. So like we had the RV Starlink, um, which we used everywhere, no problem until we were in the Bahamas and then they changed the plan. But for the Great American Loop, the standard RV plan worked, will work great. It's when you go offshore that you've got to, you've got to dial that in. The solution that we found before we started the loop, before we got Starlink, I think is still a really great solution, especially for loopers. And that is getting your Wi-Fi through the Calix Institute, which provides you with a um, kind of a, it's a cellular hotspot that provides the Wi-Fi. It's unlimited and it's unthrottled, which means you can use as much as you want and they never slow it down. Uh, it's a really interesting setup. You can read more about the Calix Institute online, but basically you join them. Um, your first year is $750 all in. That includes the little device um, and your unlimited Wi-Fi for the year. There's also cheaper options, but we went for the best and most expensive because we knew we were going to use the heck out of the internet. And that was a the four of us. Sprint network, right? No, it, it runs off of T-Mobile. So, we, so it worked amazingly until we got to Canada. Well, yeah, so we what we had up until the Keys, the Florida Keys, so from Florida to Canada to back down again, was this Calix Institute wireless hotspot and our cell phone plans. So our cell phones and the kids' iPads are AT&T, and then Calix is T-Mobile. So we had decent coverage the whole loop. I will say Calix wireless hotspot worked flawlessly up the East Coast. Does not work at all in Canada, so we were totally on our AT&T plan for that, which worked fine and it was summer and so we just kind of... And because of the plan we had, there was no international charging for being in, in Canada, Canada with AT&T. So it was seamless. We were with another boat that as we were literally on cruising to Canada, he just happened to check their cellular plan. He was not on the international one or whatever like we had and he was about to get pinged a lot for roaming. So he mid cruise had to figure out a whole yeah. cellular plan so just make sure you Figure have out ahead of time canada as part of your and north american billing the calyx institute hotspot um worked fine it worked great in the great lakes the river system is tricky we didn't have cellular or with I our phones just, or it's, it's nowhere yeah <laughs> so, it's pretty, so that's where the starlink starlink so we realized that we were going to really we really wished we had starlink once we were on the rivers uh, so, yeah, anyway. And if you're on the fence about Starlink and like worried about setting it up, of course you can pay anybody to set up anything. Oh, it's so easy. But it, it was almost too easy to set up. You literally put the tripod and the thing and you connect it to the box, plug in the box, and then there's an app 
And I spent the hardest part was I spent 45 minutes on the app looking for the network, but because Elon that. Musk is such a jokester, it didn't say new Starlink or anything obvious like that. It, say, like, it was like fluffy kitten or like Scooby Doo. Well, I was like, yeah, I cannot pants. find the network. It was like so, some odd name. So I looked it up, and everybody said, when you're setting it up, here's the network name. Well, it didn't say that in the instructions. <laughs> the instructions for Starlink made IKEA instructions look like an encyclopedia. Yeah, they were pretty simple, <laughs> but it worked great. And yeah. the Calix Institute thing was just as easily. Literally, we plugged it in, turned it on, and away we went. So, yeah, it's a little meefy. So we didn't worry about all the extra pieces of equipment that people said we needed to buy it was so simple so if you don't need if you're not worried about internet on the rivers calyx institute being t-mobile plus our cell phones being at&t was a great setup however if i were to do it again i'd just go straight to starlink when we kept it simple there were there are people that love pep wave it has different ports you can have two SD card or SIM cards for two cellular networks and then two other ports and a hierarchy and if it can't get AT&T it'll then go to Sprint and then and it it does it all seamlessly. Some people love that. We originally bought and then realized we didn't want to be that complicated. Yeah, so keep it simple stupid. Kind of one of my mottos in life. So Calix or Starlink, both are great options. One's a little more expensive. And I think Calix has a plan just at I'll put a link to Calix. They have a plan that's $500 for your first year, $400 every year after that. And then there's a $600 plan, and we did the $750 plan. And keep in mind, two adults doing business, watching TV, two kids on laptops doing school. school, and two iPads with kids talking to laptops. That worked with the Calix and with, with Starlink. Starlink. So um, We were pushing... <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got our money's the worth needs. on the all-you-can-use data. Yep. So anyway, I hope that helps you solve your internet conundrum on your boat or doing the loop. Just These are two very simple, easy to install. You do not have to be highly technical to use. So Let me also add that the internet on the boat also assisted with our cruising oh. software. So sometimes when we were at least cruising the Bahamas when we had no cell network as we were going 100 miles out to sea the Starlink was was giving us the connectivity for some of our apps to operate to put us on the maps and keep every so it was functionally it was helping us with navigation as well yeah and checking weather and all yeah. that stuff that we wouldn't otherwise have um, and here's just another little pearl of wisdom when you are in um, the Bahamas with AT&T, they say turn off your cellular. Mm. What they really mean is turn, put it in airplane mode or keep your phone off. So we got dinged even though our cellular was off. I think there's a loophole there. AT&T um, on their instructions don't say put it in airplane mode. They say turn off your cellular. Which put it did. in airplane mode because they yeah. still sneak things to you. I, I kind of feel and like you it's have to a, pay for I, I kind of feel like it's a scam. But anyway, perhaps it was user error. We'll blame us, but just know that. So. That's it. That's it. All right. Until we meet again, if you wouldn't mind picking up two pieces of trash a day, that would be awesome. Or since we're talking internet, you could clean out two pieces of trash from your folder every day. No, that doesn't clean our planet. <laughs> it's not accomplishing the same goal. It will make your computer run better, but yeah. anyway. All right, let's go opposite ways. Ready? Shine, Shine on. on. <laughs>